Let's do a brief overview of the unit. This is the Shindo 3D Wax 2X dual extruder model. Nice plexiglass door here. And it opens the opposite way of most of their other models. Measurement about 19 and a half inches wide. About 18 and a half deep. and just a little shy of 23 inches in the back. There's an IEC power jack, USB, Ethernet, two HEPA filter fans, and nice metal sides to the unit. This is a dual extruder unit for multiple colors, multiple materials. Nozzle one on the right, nozzle two on the left. Here's a nice diagram of the nozzle and its parts listed below. They've really stepped it up lately with these metal, flexible, magnetic heated beds. Really makes it nice to get your parts off of there without scrapers. These green adjustment knobs down here are for leveling the bed. And the magnetic surface makes for a nice, solid, and stable bed. Two cartridge slots, one and two, and they're numbered opposite of the nozzles, which we'll explain later. They've supplied two spools of PLA filament already installed in their new Type C cartridges. I want to stop here for a minute and take a look at these new Type C cartridges. Now, I find this very interesting. They're now putting a diagram on the front of these explaining several steps as to how to remedy a problem which I've seen with my other spools with my other machines and that is this filament breakage right where the filament comes off the spool and feeds into the tube near the rubber roller right here. I've seen this filament breakage issue with spools from my other machines over the last couple years so this is not new. I believe it's some kind of either chemical or physical interaction with this rubber roller here sitting for a long time and just inside here it'll break off and you have to open it up and just refeed it. So the way it works is you stick it in this little tube here and then you roll this gear and it'll sandwich it between the two rubber rollers and start pulling the filament off the spool. But you'll notice down inside here there's a rubber roller on this extra gear and what it does is it sandwiches up against the side of the spool so that when you spin it it helps move the spool physically as well as pulling on the filament itself. I'm going to assume that this rubber roller mechanism helps take the pressure off the filament as it goes through this meter plus long filament path as it makes its way through the extruder in the back up to the nozzle. And there's the filament chip. This is the type C cartridge, the new one required by the 2X. Now, even though the 2X requires the type C cartridge, the type C cartridge will also work on the 3D Wax one, the DP 200 and the DP 201. So the type C cartridge is backwards compatible. The older type A cartridges will only work in the DP 200, DP 201 and 3D Wax one. The type A cartridges will not work in the 2X because they don't have the little roller mechanism here that we looked at. Let's examine this filament path from the cartridge through the extruder to the nozzle. We're looking at the back of the machine here so everything's reversed. Filament cartridge number one is located up in the front of the unit, comes up underneath and in through this tube you can see the pink filament come into extruder one, go through all the mechanism of the extruder and out on this side feeds down through the case, up through this tube, and down into nozzle number one, which is opposite of where the cartridge is. Cartridge number two is over here. It feeds up and down on the bottom extruder, which is number two, out on the right, up through the case into this tube to nozzle number two. This design makes sense to me because you'd want to keep a long sweeping filament path to keep the resistance down on things like flexible filaments pushing through the Bowden. And I'm going to note at this point that on each extruder right in the center there's a black pie shaped plastic knob. 
That actually self adjusts when you use Shindo filament with a chip in it. It knows if it's PLA, ABS, or flexible, and that's a pressure knob, and it'll turn and reduce the pressure when you're using flexible filaments so that there's less resistance and it can push them through the tube with the Bowden much more effectively. I believe this pressure knob also works for open materials if you set the filament type to flexible in their software, but I haven't confirmed this. The build area of the 2X is larger than the 3D Wax 1 in previous models at 228 millimeters wide by 200 millimeters deep by 300 millimeters high. The bed on the 2X is 200 watts of power versus 100, making for faster heating. As you can see, the height is where you gain the most because the bed is only 28 millimeters wider than previous models, but you do gain 100 millimeters in the height of models you can produce. I'll wrap up this brief overview with a few thoughts. I consider this a prosumer or enthusiast level machine. It costs a good bit of money and I really think you need to know what you're doing to get the most out of this machine. Sure, you can get beautiful two color PLA models right out of the box. Uh, ABS seems to work fine, but flexible filaments and PVA supports can be challenging for a new user. I can't stress enough how good their documentation is. If you purchase this machine while you're waiting for it to arrive, RTFM, read the freaking manual. Read it cover to cover as I have. There's great information in there how to initially set it up as well as troubleshooting steps for other issues. They have good online support videos, manuals, screen captures, and email support.